Hi there, it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, today I am doing a subtle Sunday project because it's Sunday and why not? Um, and I'm going to be using the Count My Blessings stamp set and slightly scary, scary lily. -li. Um, I'm going to be kind of making it up as I go along. I, I mean, I know what I'm going to be doing and I have prepped for it, but I don't have a sample to show you. So you're going to have to wait and see. Um, the Count My Blessings comes from the new Autumn Winter Catalogue. I think it's a wee bit hidden. Um, it is in amongst the Painted Autumn suite, but kind of not. So my printed out on A4 paper version. So here's the Printed Autumn suite, which has got the Painted Harvest um, stamp set and the punch that you can get as a bundle and the lovely designer series paper one of the patterns of which has acorns on it if you turn the page you then come over to gourd gourd goodness and count my blessings with more acorn acorns and some really lovely um stamps um so it's part of the suite but as i say i think it's a bit hidden so I thought I would showcase it this morning um, and, and get away from the, uh, the gorgeous sunflowers and, and come to lovely acorns instead. Now, subtle Sunday and acorns. Hmm, you're, you're wondering about that, aren't you? And I have to say, so was I. Um, but it's going to work. So let's start. Um, I'm not going to be doing all of it on camera. I have prepped. Um, I'm starting with literally a scrap um, of shimmery white cardstock. I am bringing in the archival black. Those of you who have seen previous videos of mine, particularly recently, will know that when I come to colouring, I prefer the archival grey. Sorry, did I say this is archival grey? Uh, black. I meant archival grey. I prefer archival grey to black. Um, I think it just gives a softer look and it's less likely to bleed. Um, so, yeah. So ink up. Um, and as I say, this is just a scrap. Um, it's actually a slightly more important than just a scrap, but we'll show you why in a minute. And then straight down, straight up. And there we are. Clean your stamps reasonably quickly if you're using the archival inks because they will stain. You can get you can get your red rubber clear, um, but they will definitely stain photopolymer. I'm actually going to put another light on. It was sunny just now, and of course it's not now that I've started filming. So hopefully that's a bit better. Um, so yes, so I have cleaned on my stamp and scrub um, with the stamping mist spray, and it's beautifully clean. So let's pop that away, and then with the same block which is a D block so anyone who signed up in July for the Christmas in July um, promotion would have two of these blocks um, because that was part of the promotion now I'm going to set this aside to dry except I'm not because here's one I prepared earlier um, so that was why it was a sort of important scrap um, this is actually very vanilla that was shimmer white because we're going to be coloring on it this is very vanilla and it is one and three eighths by bleh, three and a quarter ish. Um, this is going to be, this is either going to work or it's not. And I do have a spare just in case. I may need more than one spare. Um, and I may actually need to end up doing it a different way. But here we go. So I'm just inking up my, sorry, jolting the camera, uh, inking up my stamp. Um, and then I want to try and get this sort of in the middle. Um, and I will explain why one and three eighths is important in a moment. That will do. It's live on camera. That will do. I'm not going to be fussy about that. That's pretty good. So clean the stamp up and I will need the block again, although we have finished the stamping. So pop my stamp away. Um, you may already know that I keep the red rubber that the stamps come in. So as I pull them out and put them back, um, it's particularly useful for class because then I can see if there's a gap. Um, 
rather than just having to work out whether I've got all eight stamps. Um, the pictures on the front for this one actually are at 95%. Um, it's, it's worth bearing in mind that it does it does tell you that on the front of the stamp set. Um, and then I keep the stickers. I don't tend to put the stickers on the back of my stamps. Um, it's just personal preference. Um, so I put those just in the, in the um, slip. I slip them in the um, cover of the case and then they're kept nice. So the reason that one and three eighths is important is I'm bringing in a one and three eighths circle punch and I'm going to just slip just, she says, you know, because, hey, it's live on camera. Uh, I'm just going to slip this in to my circle punch, try and make it reasonably square to the edges and punch, and then you get a nice um, rounded edge. So let's see if I can do two in a row, because, you know, as I say, live on camera, these things don't always work out quite the same as they do in real life. There we go. Hurrah. Uh, it's in. That's always a good start. Uh, and then see if we can get it at about the same distance as the first one. And that's straight. And punch. So worth bearing in mind that if you have circle punches, if you cut your um, cardstock to the same size as the circle diameter, you can get these nice shapes um, out of your cardstock. So, colouring. Now, um, as I say, we're using the Subtles collection, um, and that's what I've used for this. I've actually used the Stampin' Right markers. You could use the ink pads, because we are going to use the blender pen, um, but I actually, for this, preferred the markers, because some of it I'm doing at full strength, and it's harder to get full strength with the blender pen and the ink um, than with the um, stamp and write markers. So, so saffron is going to be our absolute friend, strangely. Um, you wouldn't think that the one of the palest colours. Um, so I'm using so saffron, pear pizzazz, blushing bride and calypso coral. Um, and all I'm going to be doing is just adding some colour to the leaves. And at this stage, I'm going to do the leaves and then the acorns and then the acorn cups. Um, not very much Calypso Coral because it is a strong colour. I would concentrate on where it's likely to have shadow um, or where it's already got marks to say that it's a bit darker. So don't go mad with your Calypso Coral. And then Pear Pizzazz, just come in and blend those colours together. Doesn't matter too much if you go outside the lines. Um, you don't want to go over into the next um, picture, but um, yeah. So we'll do this first with the pear pizzazz. So I hope you are enjoying your weekend. I hope it's reasonable weather. When you see this, I will be either on my way or will be at a team meeting. There are going to be about 50 of us. It's going to be fantastic. Um, it's a, an exclusive um, meeting just for members of the demo team that I'm a member uh, part of. Uh, I'm going back in with the So Saffron. Um, just to blend everything in a bit more. So yes, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be great to see loads of old chums um, and uh, yeah, have a, have a full day's crafting. And we've got some business talks and all sorts. Um, and I'm really lucky that one of my team is coming with me. Unfortunately, only one of them could make it, um, but that will be good. It'll be good to see her and good to have her at the event. So, as you can see, those are actually quite reasonable autumnal leaf colours. This will fade back. Um, if I put this on top, you will see that it is a, a softer colour by the time it's dried. Now, Calypso Coral. I'm going around the outside of the acorns. 
and I've just realised I didn't want to do it quite like that, but it'll be fine. Let's scribble on there and bring this in to blend that out a bit, because I don't really want it quite such a full strength. But it'll be fine. And then do the next one. Now, the shimmery white is reasonably forgiving with um, putting in colour and going over. Um, but don't go too, too mad or it will eventually pill. If you want to layer up a lot, uh, again, I'm back in with the So Saffron. I did say So Saffron would be our friend. Um, if you go over too much in one go, it will pill. Um, so it is a question of laying down some colour. In fact, it's beginning to pill there. Let's get rid of that. It doesn't matter that it's smudged because it would be cut out. Um, but yeah, you need to just be a bit careful about that. Blushing Bride for the cup. Honest. So, so yes, what are we doing tomorrow? Uh, we don't really know exactly what we're doing tomorrow other than... Um, I'm taking loads of stamps with me. I'm one of the um, team monitors, so I've got lots of stuff to take with me. Uh, we do swaps, so we can see what other people have made with um, with the uh, items in the catalogue. Some of them are the new catalogue items, some of them are um, existing catalogue items, so from the um, annual catalogue. Um, but yeah, you don't have to do swaps. Um, it's it's kind of up to you, really. I'm just going to scribble that off so I know it's clean next time I need it. So then uh, the green, Pear Pizzazz again. And again, this is going to be green and uh, Blushing Bride. But I'll get the green down first, I think. And I really am not worried about going over the lines here because they are all going to be cut out. And a lot of this is going to be covered up anyway. So then Blushing Bride over the top. And as you can see, that actually is quite good for autumnal colours. So I'm not going to make you sit and watch me cut out. Life really is too short. So I am not doing it. Um, I will bring in my card base and mats. Um, and this actually is the Acon paper, which is very definitely in the neutrals. Um, but the, this reverse goes really nicely with the So Saffron. Now, remember that both in the catalogue and on the back of the paper, it gives you the colours that have been used. Um, in fact, I've not used any of these colours um, apart from very vanilla. But that's not to say they aren't kind of there as a tone. Um, so yeah, uh, but it does at least give you a guide. So if you're if you're new um, to stamping and to stamping up, um, the fact that it gives you a guide to the colours that you can use is a great help. Um, so it takes the guesswork out. So I've got a um, very vanilla thick card base on new lovely um, very vanilla card bases. Um, of course, I've just realised I have packed most of what I need for um, our team event because I film in advance, but I also pack in advance. So I might have to run around and grab things, but we'll give it a go. Um, so let's let's hope I've got enough um, glue in my Tombow. Um, actually, I don't think I have, but we'll give it a go and then I'll grab a I'll grab a something else. I've had it upside down in my in my pen holder. You don't need that much, but a little bit more than I've got coming out at the moment. Okay, for the for the sake of the video, that will be fine. Um, so and I will grab a snail. I happen to know I have a snail in the bin under my desk. And by bin, I mean trolley. Um, right, so that's So Saffron. That is uh, my usual 5 and 5 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths, 14 and a quarter by 7 and 3 quarter centimetres. Do not worry about writing any.
any dimensions down, they are on the blog post linked down there. Um, so, some snail um, rather than Tombow for my very vanilla. This is the ordinary very vanilla, but if you've only got the thick, there's no reason to not use the thick. Um, but I have both, so I'm using the the standard weight there. Uh, then the um, designer series paper. It's always a little sad to cover up um, a nice pattern, but you know, use it or or keep it in your stash. I think using it is probably a better idea. Um, so I am. This is cut at five inches by three and a quarter, um, and this is cut at uh, five and a quarter by three and a half. Um, she says, having to remember what she cut it at. Um, so there we are. That's the basis. Then. This is going to go in the middle on dimensionals, so let me grab some dimensionals first. Uh, which would be really helpful if I had any of those available. There we go. <sighs> I know I'm normally dis disorganised, but this really is worse than usual. Okay, so I'm just putting them down the middle because I'm then going to tuck things underneath. And that's where having a new Tombow might actually be quite a clever idea. Um, so I'm actually going to put this to one side just for a bit of interest. Could put it square if you like things square. I'm going to grab a new Tombow. It's a brand new Tombow, so let's unzip that. It's always quite exciting when I get to the point where I need a new Tombow because it means that I've been really frugal with what I've had. Uh, that was an old Tombow going in the bin. Right, so let's grab what I've already prepared. So these I just did the same and then cut them out while I was watching television because I really cannot stand just sitting watching television. I have to have something to do. Um, so all I'm going to do, and I have to say I cheated, so to cut out this bit, I just cut into the stalk, because I'm going to tuck the stalks underneath anyway, so it doesn't matter. Isn't that inevitable? So I get a nice brand spanking new Tombow. Ah, there we are. I store it that way up in my drawer for my stock, um, and clearly it all sank to the bottom, which is what it would do. So I've cut these leaves off the side. So if you look at this, there's this big leaf. Um, so I've cut that separately so that I've got um, the option of tucking that in as a separate item. And then I'm just going to shape that a bit as I put it down. I might shape these before I put them down. It'd be easier really, wouldn't it? If I had a brain, let me make sure you're in camera. Currently in the process of trying to find a better camera um, tripody thing. I want to get a, an arm that can hang from my ceiling because I've got a I've got a beam up there. Don't have shelves other than my ribbon shelf, um, and it would be a waste to use. Actually, I want that around a bit, a bit more. Oh, I'm not going to have it around a bit more. Um, shows you how quickly Tombow sets. Let's curl those a bit while I'm doing it. Um, so yes, I don't. I only have my ribbon shelf, which is great for storing ribbon on, uh, but couldn't take weight, weight, weight. Um, but rather than having to work round tripod legs, it would be quite nice to um, have my camera hanging from the ceiling and then I don't have to work around it quite the same as I currently do which would be lovely really um, but I can't find one that is an arm that is long enough it's great if you only want 11 inches but I need about um, a meter and a half so I'm going to have to continue my search and in the meantime continue bashing you guys sorry so as you see just building up the uh, the layers of acorns. Where are we time-wise? Good grief, 20 minutes. That's ridiculous. Um, 
so what do I need to tell you uh, Merry Patterns do you remember the Merry Patterns promotion um, so if you've if you've got a large order 250 pounds or more you will get that free um, if you do not have a large order then if you use my hostess code which is in the details below and on my website then you will be entered into a draw uh, there will be at least one Mary Patton's stamp set up for grabs um, possibly more we will see how it goes um, and so that would be if you're spending between 25 and not going over 150 pounds or not going to 150 pounds um, so yeah and then you get to share in the hostess rewards as well you will get a an entry for every 25 pounds that you spend in my online store so if you spend 75 pounds for example you will get three entries um, only in the UK I'm afraid because I only operate in the UK at the moment um, I don't want to run the risk of going overseas until we know what's happening with the political situation um, so yeah so if you are shopping in the UK um, please 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 do shop with me I would love to have your custom um, I do look after my VIPs at least I hope I do um, and it would be lovely to add you to that selection of people um, if you have a large order uh, frankly I think you'd be better off joining my team um, because then you'll get a discount both on your large order and um, on your future orders so that would be good um, and then you get to go to team events like me so there you are um, oh the other thing is um, I mentioned in yesterday's video that by the end of October I would like to have 2,000 subscribers at least because then I can celebrate my birthday which is on the 1st of November with at least 2,000 subscribers so if you haven't subscribed already please hit the subscribe button down there um, if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up if you've got any questions or comments please add those below um, I always 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 reply to comments um, I sometimes get them and I they're an old project and I have to remember what the project was because they just come into my inbox so that's always a bit of a challenge but I do always reply to comments um, anyway I hope you enjoyed that um, all the details are in the blog post which is linked below the products I've used are also linked below um, both in the description below and also on the blog post so uh, details of the Merry Patterns um, promotion also on my blog post as is the details or as are the details for the paper and ribbon share which today is the last day for that um, I will need payments by 5 p.m. Uh, UK time uh, today so if you are still wondering about taking a paper share please do get onto that quickly um, although I'm not in today I will be able to deal with uh, any queries that come through on my mobile phone so I hope you've enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you again very soon thanks a lot for watching bye